Hello everyone, I am Hubert and welcome to Teach Me channel. Today we'll be looking at GCSE Physics, Internal Energy and Changes of State. So we'll be looking at a bit more closely what internal energy is. I think I mentioned it in a previous video briefly, but we'll be expanding on what internal energy is, how it works, and we'll be looking at the changes of state how they are related to the internal energy and uh, what what's happening actually when we changing the state of particles so here i'm talking about changing from solid to liquid and gas and back to get back to solid you know it so without further ado let's get started so first of all what is internal energy internal energy is the energy contained by the particles energy is sort of held in the particles in a system. So that's what internal energy is. It's simply a term that describes how much energy particles have. Now, that internal energy breaks down into two different types of energy. So as a part of internal energy, we have kinetic energy. Because when the particles essentially get heated up, even with the temperature, Particles are constantly moving around, uh, whether they're moving around a little or whether they're moving around a lot. They are constantly in a state of motion, they're moving around, and movement is kinetic energy. They, they have kinetic energy to do that. Now, the other type of energy is the potential energy, which is slightly more complex. It's to do with their positions, where they are in relation to each other, and also how they are overcoming... Uh, gravity. So so that is potential energy. So together, kinetic energy together with potential energy come together to form internal energy. So here's the equation, i.e. internal energy is equal to Ke kinetic energy plus Pe potential energy. So that makes sense. Uh, kinetic energy and potential energy form part of internal energy. So when you add them together, that gives you internal energy. Now, so what happens when we are heating a particle? When, when we heat a particle, say, put some water, chuck some water in a beaker, stick it on, uh, on a stove, and start he we start heating it up. So essentially what we are doing is we are increasing temperature. Now, temperature refers to the particle's uh, kinetic energy. So the higher the temperature, the higher the kinetic energy of the particles the potential energy stays uh, roughly the same. But it is the kinetic energy that's the main culprit. It's the kinetic energy that increases when we increase the temperature. And because we're in increasing the kinetic energy without decreasing potential energy, our total internal energy increases in a particle. So now, by heating up particles, we can increase their internal energy. So, what happens in terms of changes of state? Well, because we are increasing the kinetic energy of particles, we can start uh, messing with the bonds of the particles. So, uh, I'll, I'll explain this in a sec. So, first of all, here we start with solid particles. Solid particles are arranged uh, neatly and they are tightly held together by the bonds. They are tightly held together by the bonds. And uh, therefore they are held in one specific spot. They can vibrate a little, but they are generally held in a specific spot, which is why solids have a specific shape. For example, this pen is a solid and it has a specific shape. I cannot uh, change it easily without, I mean, I can break it, but I cannot easily change it or anything. So that's what solids are. Now, when we start heating up a solid, we are adding more kinetic energy to those particles. So they start to vibrate a little bit more. If we carry on heating it up, they start vibrating even more. Eventually, when we supply them with enough kinetic energy, they will they will overcome they will start breaking out of their bonds they will break the bonds that are holding them together they will overcome it 
they will overcome the bond holding them to other particles. And when that happens, we get what's called melting. Melting and then the solid becomes liquid. And the liquid, in liquid, the particles have much more movement. They have much more, a much bigger freedom of movement. They can move around much more. They are still held together uh, quite a bit, but they have much more movement and they are no longer held in a fixed place. They can fill a container. They can take a shape of a container. So, so that, that's that for liquids and they become liquid. Now, if we carry on adding kinetic energy, they carry on moving more and then eventually they overcome the bonds holding them together in the liquid formation. And then we get boiling. And then when particles boil, we get gases. Gases uh, can move around very, very freely. They can move around a lot. And, uh, and, that's, and uh, they're gases. They have a lot of movement. That's the main characteristics. And that's the final stage of the part that particles can be at. If we heat up gases more and more, they will the gas will sort of become less dense. The particles will move further apart from each other, uh, but uh, it will still be a gas. There there is n there isn't really any much else over a gas. Now, in the opposite direction, we have uh, when we start with a gas. We have condensing. When we start losing that uh, kin kinetic energy, um, by that I mean that kinetic energy gets transferred onto surroundings, uh, possibly as heat or possibly as some other type of energy when it gets transferred away. We are essentially, the particles do not have as much kinetic energy anymore. And then they the bonds start reforming. And therefore the particles are condensing back from gas into liquid. If we carry on losing that kinetic energy, transferring it away, then the bonds uh, in the liquid start uh, reforming again that will hold them in a fixed place and freezing occurs when the particle turns from liquid to solid state. Now, the important thing to consider here is that the mass of the particle is always conserved throughout the change of state. The mass of the particle stays conserved at all times, as long as we don't lose some particles, the mass stays conserved. And by that, what I mean is that this solid right here has the same amount of particles that this liquid has right here that has the same amount of particles that this gas has. And therefore, the mass stays the same. This solid will weigh the same as this liquid as this gas will. And that's very important. And of course, um, we have another type of uh, state change here, uh, written down. Sublimating. What is that? Well, sublimating is actually uh, much less common than, th uh, than this pathway. But sublimating is when the change of state is so instantaneous that we go from solid straight to gas. One uh, good example of that is carbon dioxide, or in other words, dry ice, where in, in very cool temperatures, carbon dioxide is solid. And uh, what, and because the, and that's the whole reason why we call it dry ice, because once uh, it starts heating up, it sub sublimates straight to a gas. It doesn't really go through any appreciable uh, liquid phase. It just goes straight to a gas state. So, so that's the, that's how the uh, molecules change their state. And uh, this is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate when you guys watch my videos. Uh, if you want to stay up to date uh, with uh, some physics, chemistry, biology, maths, and some biomedical science videos, hit the subscribe button below. Don't be shy. If you think this video helped you, give me a big thumbs up. Thank you again very much for watching and see you next time.